guest. Uh, we will tell you exactly why I'm here in Phoenix once the interview is underway for security reasons. Um, it's great to have so many wonderful listeners out there, but I, I mentioned I was flying to Phoenix yesterday before I took off, and there were folks at the airport waiting for us, which was great to see them. Uh, it's just that, uh, obviously, the show is so giant now uh, that, that not everybody out there listening are good guys. So, again, Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com. Paul Watson's hosting the fourth hour today. Back to David Knight in the InfoWars News Center. I'll be hosting the show tomorrow from Phoenix uh, Arizona. But back to David Knight and the InfoWars News Center. Let's work together uh, to try to stop um, what could brew into a controlled civil war to bring in civil emergency. Let's keep the focus on the fact they're coming after our guns. Let's keep the focus on the fact they're opening our borders. Let's do like the governor said, come and take it from Texas. Governor Abbott over the weekend, uh, you know, with state authority saying no, that's what we need. Uh, not uh, these you know, takeovers of, a, of an empty building that's perfect for then feds from all over the country to now infiltrate, stir stuff up, uh, God knows do what. I mean, it's textbook. And anybody saying we shouldn't watch out for infiltrators, anybody saying we shouldn't be concerned for people calling for violence or unrest or civil disobedience is major league suspect. They're either as dumb as the day is long or they are playing to somebody else's tune, ladies and gentlemen. 1776 is an idea. We're winning the info war right now. We do not want this to get physical, but if it does, let them shoot first. If they mean to have a battle, you know, as they famously said at Bunker Hill, then you'll let it start here today. Well, it already has started in the info war. When we're winning. Let's not give the big foundations in Soros and the Southern Poverty Law Center and ADL what they want. They say the big war with Patriots is coming. They say they've given them the armored vehicles and that they're going to have war with us any minute. Let's not light the fuse for them, folks. Let's document everything that's happening. They'll undoubtedly are going to pull false flags. It's the season for it. It's in the cards. It's the right time for them to do it. I get in their mind and kind of look at what they would do. We need to be working hard to stop any terror attacks, working hard to frustrate them provocateur, but also if something does happen, we need cameras there instantly to document everything. Your troops in the battle for this republic. You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world, and it's called Shilajit. And it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago, as a matter of fact, this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite. Thousands of years ago, up in the Himalayan mountains and in Tibet. And we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple of years, but we couldn't get an organic form. Right. I mean, so I, let's explain. I mean, we, this stuff's so good, we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, Thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime- So it's almost like an oil up. from- Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're, they're always claiming down. oil is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But so, so this is a true fossil uh, source. I mean, explain it to me. It is. A, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over seven thousand different medicinal herbs and plants. And it and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and and during the summertime and the pressures build it up. It oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black, and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it, it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I, and I, I don't expose myself to any chemicals. InfoWarsLife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer-funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> Last year, we saw politicians come after the First Amendment like no other time in history. One of the people is Hillary Rodham Clinton. She tried to shut down the Laugh Factory, a group of comedians for dare making fun of her. And when we see this, you know, you think about the late night guys, you know, from uh, uh, Leno to Letterman to all the new guys, the Jimmy guys. You know, they always make fun of politicians. It's nothing new. It's nothing, you know, pointed or, or hate. I mean, I guess you could argue whether or not it's hateful, but it's nothing new. Right, so if they dare make fun of Hillary Clinton, now she wants to shut them down. So in response to this, we had the Make Fun of Hillary contest. And here are just a few of the entries, and the winner is going to be announced soon. Let's take a look at some of these videos. If you don't know me by now, I am Hillary Clinton. Seriously, what is up with what Hillary Clinton has been wearing lately? You guys seen this stuff? Looks like a third world dictator. It's like Hillary went uh, on a secret mission to see Kim Jong-un in North Korea when she was Secretary of State. And Kim Jong-un was like, go away, go away. I have something for you. Take my hand-me-downs. I win all my elections, all my elections. 100% vote for me. You wear this, 100% vote for you. Now, Hillary, you know you must prop up a facade as if you have some supporters. <laughs> and make it look like these elections actually matter. Hola. Como esta usted? Hillary is destined for this office. Can't you see how much she wants it? How much her happiness depends on getting this election? You want to take that away from her? Good morning, good morning. You guys aren't afraid of Hillary Clinton, are you? Don't hide from Hillary. I'm running for president. Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. I'm hitting the road to earn your vote, and I hope you'll join me on this journey. Regressive leftists are self-proclaimed liberals who abandon liberal principles by tolerating and defending non-liberal ideologies. When right-wing Christian fundamentalists like the Westboro Baptist Church espouse hatred for gays, adulterers, and anyone who rejects their God, progressives react with scorn. They chastise such beliefs for being outdated, intolerant, and dangerous, and rightly so. Yet when Muslims espouse the very same beliefs Self-proclaimed liberals suddenly lose all their liberal convictions and either remain silent or viciously attack critics of Islam. They contradict their own liberal values by acting as apologists 
for illiberal ideas. Remember, polls show that the clear majority of Muslims in numerous Middle Eastern countries support stoning women to death and killing people who leave the religion of Islam. Last time I checked, those weren't liberal principles. Oh, that's their culture, you have to respect it. That's right, yeah. that's what yeah. they say, it's, yeah. it's just insane. Yeah. It's just the one exception, liberal about everything else, but then this, this one exception, it's their culture. Well, to hell with their culture. So why do self-proclaimed liberals act as apologists for the illiberal religion of Islam? Let's take a look at a few examples. The left-wing group Hope Not Hate, which describes itself as anti-fascist, recently compiled a list of anti-Muslim bigots. This list of anti-Muslim bigots included Raquel Saraswati, a headscarf-wearing devout Muslim who campaigns against honor violence. In Pakistan alone, 1,000 women are executed every single year for honor crimes that include wearing jeans, looking at a man twice, or singing. So this left-wing supposedly anti-bigotry organization actually listed a devout Muslim as an anti-Muslim bigot simply for drawing attention to this. The list also included Ayan Hirsi Ali, an ex-Muslim who has dedicated her life to pushing for a reform of Islam to make it more tolerant and more in line with liberal principles. Hirsi Ali had previously appeared on another list, that of Islamist jihadists who murdered her colleague on the streets of Amsterdam in 2004 and promised that she was next. Hope Not Hate says its goal is to, quote, undermine groups that preach hate, intolerance, and division. But in smearing these people amongst numerous other reformists, they are supporting a belief system which promotes hate, intolerance, and division. This flagrant hypocrisy is a defining characteristic of the regressive left. Okay, but think about it. And you what don't you, do it by saying to them Muslims are bad. But you're not saying Muslims I'm not, are bad. Right. You are saying that you We're oh. saying the ideas need to be changed. You're and saying by their the way, ideas are bad? Uh, killing women for being raped, I would say, is a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, I do. Hang me for it. And given that leftist groups have aligned philosophically with Islamists, in identifying reformists and critics of Islam as the enemy, it's unsurprising that jihadists see this as an opportunity. In its recent manifesto, ISIS discussed how their operatives in Europe would seek to recruit, radicalize, and arm left-wing activists because they broadly share the same political goals. So you've got adherents of ISIS, which promotes the most intolerant, hateful, and violent belief system, actually reaching out to leftists because they see them as philosophical bedfellows. Glenn Greenwald is another example of a regressive leftist. After doing sterling work exposing NSA surveillance via the Edward Snowden leaks, Greenwald now appears to spend most of his time trying to smear the new atheists, most recently Richard Dawkins, because they're critical of Islam. Despite the fact that Greenwald, as a gay man, would be executed in many Muslim countries. Despite claiming that he's a champion of free speech, Greenwald responded to the jihadist slaughter of Charlie Hebdo cartoonists and staff by attacking the publication itself labeling it offensive and bigoted towards Muslims. Even though Charlie Hebdo was notorious for its eagerness to offend both Jews and Christians in equal measure. In a Twitter exchange with me, Greenwald suggested that his love of free speech was so strident that he would even defend Nazis. But when I challenged him to defend Donald Trump's free speech rights after his controversial comments on Muslim immigration, Greenwald went completely silent. Regressive leftists are only prepared to defend the free speech rights of those with whom they agree. Given the choice between being politically correct or standing by their principles, regressive leftists will choose the former every single time. But Greenwald doubled down on his regressivism, later retweeting an ISIS supporter who once advocated killing homosexuals to endorse his argument 
during an exchange with Majid Nawaz. This is a defining characteristic of the regressive left. They will even side with people who would literally execute them in cold blood rather than criticize the intolerant aspects of Islam. Then